You're watching Fox 13's Good Day in High Definition. Another week, another round of emotional testimony in the Casey Anthony trial, and America is watching. Seems like people are following every line of questioning, riveted by every little detail in this disturbing case. So we ask people, why are they watching? It, it reminds me of Jersey Shore. <laughs> <laughs> like all the drama and all that, like I just reminds me of Jersey Shore. Because I'm a parent, um, my heart goes out to the grandparents who have to endure a lot of that and of course the little girl. This is a very compelling case even for those of us who are legal experts like this man to my right here, Attorney Felix Vega. Good morning, Narisa. Good morning. He's joining us to talk about the trial. He's been following it all along. Felix, lots of emotion this week, and you have to wonder what's going through the jury's mind. We, I mean, you, you see, you heard the breakdowns, all the crime between mother and daughter, and all the reaction. Uh, you know, what's your reaction to it all of this? It really started last weekend because we started with Cindy Anthony taking the stand last Saturday, and she got emotional all the way up into Tuesday. We saw her breaking down the stand during all those 911 calls were played, and she sort of backed off at points about the smell of the dead body. They're also seeing Casey Anthony react to everyone testifying, her brother Lee, um, also her mother reacting. But I think the most compelling thing we saw this week was when they played those jail videos of her interacting with her father, interacting with her mother. And she reacted very strongly when uh, her and her father were talking. And she's painting this as, you know, her father's a child muster, but she gets emotional, when he, especially when he analogized their family to a hand. It was Casey, Kelly, Cindy, George, and um, Lee. So a lot of emotions. The jurors are watching all this, but in the end, they're going to get one final instruction that tells them that sympathy or whether or not they feel bad for one side or the other cannot play a part in their verdict. Yeah, it's, okay. it's a tough call. Let's talk about Casey's state of mind. That was a big topic because it's all over the place. I mean, you heard about her imaginary friends. You hear about how she was, that, that testimony where she was leading detectives to this fake office at Universal uh, Studios. Uh, what do you do with all this? Does this just show that Casey's insane? Or? No, no. Actually, for the, for the prosecutors, they're trying to show that this is her state of mind during not only those 31 days when Casey originally went missing from the testimony we heard last week from all the witnesses about where she went and everything that she was doing. But now we're looking at the cover up and the lengths that she went to the universal trip. That was extraordinary testimony from the mm -hmm. detective and they went through so much to get her to break. They tracked down all the stories that she was telling and she went so far as to take them to universal, walk through that gate, walk around the back lots of universal and almost to her office before she finally said, all right, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, this is not true. And then when they started pressing her about giving her all sorts of scenarios, they gave her every possible out to tell the truth about what happened to Kaylee and get to the truth. She avoided it. She stayed on message and she stuck with the Zanny the Nanny story. It, outrageous. Absolutely. Uh, in outrageous. my opinion. Okay. This is something different. The, the defense listed this new witness uh, late Thursday, a professor from FSU who's a grief counselor. Now, um, that was an unexpected move. So, so what's up with that? It was very last minute and almost untimely is the word that we use uh, in court. This is going to be addressed actually this afternoon, I believe, at 1 o'clock. The judge is going to have a hearing on this to determine whether or not this uh, grief counselor, uh, she's actually an RN and a PhD, Sally Carrioth is the name that we got from the defense on uh, late Thursday afternoon. She's from Florida State University, and one of the courses that she teaches is the individual death in the family. But if this is the linchpin of the defense's case, why wait till now to disclose this and possibly create these problems of whether or not she's gonna, even going to be able to testify about Casey's state of mind? Hmm. And we're just scratching the surface here. So much to talk about, but we've run out of time. Thank you, Felix. But we do want to know what your questions are, and Felix can answer them in our 8 a.m. hour. So post your questions about the Casey Anthony case on my Facebook page, Narisa Press. Just go to Facebook, and then we'll get to them in the 8 o'clock hour. Thank you again, Felix, for, Thanks, for all of that. You're watching Fox 13's Good Day in High Definition. Another week, another round of emotional testimony in the Casey Anthony trial. This is a very compelling case. America is watching. It's very compelling even to those who are legal experts like Felix Vega, an attorney. We're over here. <laughs> yeah, we had a little bit of a technical glitch there, but we're getting over that. Okay, so um, we asked in the 6 o'clock hour for everybody's questions, and they right. posted some on Facebook. So let's get right to them. Um, let's see. We have our first question here from a, 
a viewer named Kevin. He says, how do some cases warrant longer trials than others of similar charges? Well, it goes on a case-by-case -case basis. It really depends on what the facts of the case are. In this case, it would be a lot easier if we had an actual body that we could have performed an autopsy on to determine the cause of death. The state's case in Casey Anthony is they have to put together all the forensic evidence to try and prove what the cause of death was. All they have at this point is bones, some hair fibers from the back of the car, decomp evidence. So it's a lot they have to string together to prove the case against her. Okay, then there's a reason for everything here. And every case is different. Correct. So I mean, okay, let's go to the next uh, viewer question here. Can we pull that one up? Karen is asking, can George Anthony sue the defense for slander because they are painting him as, you know, this bad father. And the difference with the libel and slander uh, cover stuff that's either spoken on TV or radio, mm -hmm. that's stuff that's published in newspapers or magazines. I mean, one thing if Jose Bias took out a full page ad in the Orlando Sentinel or went on air totally tell, uh, accusing George Anthony of being a child molester or abusing Casey Anthony. Uh, in this case, these are all things that are being said in the course of the trial in defense of Casey in a public courtroom. Once the trial's over and these allegations still continue, he might have a possible suit against either Jose Baez or anyone that does continue to raise those allegations against him, especially if they're false and people know that they're false. Okay, but that's down the road. We've got to take Correct. care of this one first. One okay. step at a time. Now, we talked about this one last week, but people, right. it's still still a talker here. Where is Kaylee's father? Um, Patty wrote this. Maybe I've missed something, but haven't heard a word about him still. Where is Kaylee's father and all this? And this is one of those questions we've been seeing a lot pop up on Twitter and on Facebook. It's where is Kaylee's father? There have been a lot of different people uh, giving their opinions about is it George Anthony is it Lee Anthony is it one of the stories that she's told numerous times we simply don't know the answer to that and whether or not we're going to find out in the trial is a different question there's still a lot more to go and I keep telling everyone this is almost like a football game you have to keep moving the chains down the field to see where we're going to get to the end zone and eventually all this is going to unravel or all this is going to come together for the state and the defense. And it's funny you say football game because like a football game, everybody's watching, everybody's putting their input in on Twitter, on Facebook. They're watching the live feeds. It's really changed over the years how the public can get involved in a trial. It has, and especially the last big uh, high-profile trial that I can remember was O.J. Simpson was back in 1996 and just be able now to watch everything Twitter acts almost like a live transcript of the trial reporters are in there telling everything that's going on the live feed is great to watch but having the reporters in there telling how the jurors are reacting who they're looking at are they looking at Casey what's Casey Anthony doing what are George and Cindy doing it gives a whole new level of information to the public for us as journalists and lawyers to use as well it's really educating the public a lot more it's a great tool and we hope to see more of it all right, Felix Vega, our attorney, our expert on this right now for the weekend. Thanks for having me, Nerissa. Yeah, thank you. We'll have you again. Okay, and we will be right back.